History, the study of past events, particularly in human affairs. History is one of the most influential things in human culture. It's the groundwork for the future. It's what we build off of to live the next day. That bowl of frosted flakes you had yesterday? History. That time your grandma told you the story of how she walked through the Sahara Desert to get to school? That's some history. History is a vastly in-depth study. It's the world's most interesting field of study as it pretty much talks about everything that has ever happened. Anytime you see a timeline from that game theory video, you got it. That's some history. You see, history is what we use to learn how to better ourselves and how to improve going forward. Without history, we would have no clue where we came from, what we used to wear, or anything about our planet's past. However, one question that is seldom asked is this. What is the history of, well, history? I know it sounds ridiculous, but seriously, what's the history of history? When was history first recorded? How was history first recorded? Now, these questions are questions that you probably didn't think of, but guess what? Your 400 subscriber boy did. And so today, we're going to take a swim in the sea of history and find out what is the true history of history. The current year is 2022. Our society has come a long way since it was first around. Long gone are the days of Barney looking for more than just a salad. For us to properly look at the history of history, we're going to have to borrow Mr. Stubby's time machine and travel way back to 4100 BC, or 4100 years before Jesus Christ of the Bible was alive. Why 4100? Well, the answer is quite simple. It is simply the very first date on the Wikipedia page. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> In 4100 BC, an important leap for mankind was had. A special writing system was developed around this time, known as the cuneiform writing system. Now, the cuneiform writing system did not become a mainstream writing system until around 3200 BC, almost 1,000 years after where we're talking in 4100 BC. However, it is estimated that in 4100 BC, the first beginning signs of the cuneiform writing system were invented. So, to make it simpler, let's just pick up when the cuneiform writing system was a mainstream writing system around 3200 BC. Now, this writing system was pretty much the predominant way that history was recorded way back then. Now, they were not simply crossing their T's and dotting their I's. No, instead, the cuneiform writing system consisted of writing different shapes, symbols, and other various sketches into clay tablets. This system was invented to write and record the ancient Sumerian language. The Sumerians were an empire that inhabited what is nowadays Iraq. Now we all think of writing as putting pen to paper or whipping out Microsoft Word and pumping out a three-page essay, but this is not what writing was back for them. No, writing instead was a lot different back then. Now, other forms of writing, such as etching words or symbols into stone tablets or wood tablets, was another popular form of writing at this time, such as what you see happen in the early books of the Christian Bible, sometimes referred to as the Torah. This is history's first major breakthrough. These forms of writing opened the door for history to be recorded in a way that it had never been recorded before. From about 4000 BC to current day, the history of our world was recorded in a way that the history before 4000 BC just simply was not recorded. Thus, history, or more specifically, the history of history, has been born. Now, around 3250 BC, a certain civilization with a fascination for cats joined the scene. The ancient Egyptians were a major civilization of ancient times. These people were absolute savages as they wrapped their dead in toilet paper and fed the criminals to beetles. Okay, now that's a bit of an exaggeration, but we all know they did some pretty funky stuff. However, they made hieroglyphics one of the mainstream forms of recording history. The ancient Egyptians used a combination of ink from reed brushes and carvings to create their form of written language. 
what is now known as hieroglyphics. These interesting little guys could get a little wild every now and then, and they are certainly the most interesting form of writing that humans have recorded. With hieroglyphics on the scene, humans now recorded history between them, at least for the Egyptians, and cuneiform writing. Both of these forms of writing involved some combination of symbols and pictures, as just straight up word for word writing was still a long ways away. However, around the time of the Egyptians, papyrus was also invented. Papyrus was their form of paper, basically, and so now at this point, we have pens, inks, scrolls, or papyrus, and symbols that we can now use to record history. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. We're gonna jump to 1600 BC, where the Shang-Chi, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean the Shang Dynasty of China was in control. Here, for some reason, the Chinese started to write stuff on bones called Oracle Bone Writing. Here, Chinese people would sketch Chinese words into, well, bones. <laughs> they would just take a honk of a leg from a bear and start jotting down some history on it. This was a very interesting time to say the least, but hey, humans are very weird. Okay, so finally, let's take our time machine to one more place from the ancient times, the time of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is the Lord and Savior of the Christians, believed to be the Son of God and given divine power. Now, regardless of what you believe about Jesus or Christianity, we do know that Jesus himself did actually exist. Jesus existed in the time of the Roman Empire, which some of you may know was one of the biggest empires of all time. Many leaders of the Roman Empire, such as Josephus and Tacitus, have recorded writings that talk about Jesus, among other things. History before Jesus was on the scene is actually recorded as BC, which stands for Before Christ, and history after this is AD. Now that's a Latin term. It basically just means the time after Jesus. During this time, history had evolved a lot. Ink and parchment were now the main forms of writing and recording history. The Romans were now the domineering empire, rather than the Egyptians or the Persians. History was recorded in the most advanced way up to this point. Now, most history was written in Hebrew, Greek, Spanish, or Chinese at this point, and almost all writing was on physical paper, or at that time it was scrolls or parchment or whatever they had during their day. Museums may have existed at this point, but this is a long, long time before modern day museums were on the scene. History is the study of past events as we know, so the history of the study of past events naturally has a direct correlation with writing. Writing was the way to record events. In fact, it was the only way to record events. At this point, writing pretty much kept developing all the way until what we know it is today. An early form of paper was invented around 100 years after Jesus died by the Chinese. Ink was still used with quills or with other forms of pens. Between parchment or scrolls and the rising popularity of paper, from this point forward in human culture, history was recorded using words of whatever language on some form of paper. And this is how history was recorded all the way up until the digital age started being the predominant way to record history. So for hundreds and hundreds of years after the death of Jesus, this is pretty much how history was recorded. However, there is one notable time that history was strangely absent from human culture. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. This is known as the Dark Ages. No, 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 not those Dark Ages. These Dark Ages. From around 500 to 1000 AD, about 500 years before the discovery of America, this period is known as the Dark Ages. History was dry during this time. After the fall of the Roman Empire, this time period was viewed by many as the least recorded time period of after Jesus' death. There are much less recordings and writings during the Dark Ages than there were in the other ages. You know how when Summoning Salt talks about how speedrun world records go through dry spells? Well, that's what happened in Earth's actual history during this time. 
History, art, and science were all dead in this era, with very little discovery or progress made during this roughly 500 year period. However, eventually, the world did escape from the underground and it made it back to a world where history was loved, preserved, and cared for. In 1450, a groundbreaking invention was made. The first very early version of the printing press was invented by Johannes Gutenberg. This revolutionized history and the recording of it. For the first time, mass sheets of easily usable paper was accessible to the public. Now beforehand, papyrus from the Egyptians or the early version of paper from the Chinese were accessible, but it took a lot of time to make and not everybody just had loads of paper lying around. However, from 1450 onward, the printing press changed the landscape of how history was recorded, allowing more than just high-ranking officials and people of status to be able to record history. Shortly after that, in 1471, another notable event happened. Pope Sixtus IV, this interesting looking fellow right here, established what is thought to be the oldest museum in the world, now known as the Capitoline Museum. He donated some stuff like bronze and maybe a few post-it notes, who knows, but we at least know that he did donate some bronze to this museum in 1471. Since then, the museum collected many different artifacts, such as ancient Roman artifacts, gemstones, and jewels, and ancient writings of all different kinds. This gave birth to the modern era of museums. From 1471 onward, what we think of as modern museums were introduced into human culture. Humans had been writing history down on paper for so long now, they naturally wanted to expand and put physical history on display. Life kept moving on, and over the next 300 years, from 1400 to 1700, this marked the age of astronomy. Astronomy is basically the study of space, and during this time, astronomers such as Nicholas Copernicus, Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kepler, and Tycho Brahe made major discoveries about space. This shaped many things, mainly our understanding of our planet Earth. For all of history, people thought that planets and the sun rotated the Earth, when instead they found out that the Earth actually rotated the sun. Along with the continuing development of writing, people now started to understand how the Earth itself operated. One of the biggest, most major points that has shaped the last pretty much 600 years of human life was Christopher Columbus discovering America. America is a modern-day powerhouse of a nation, and this discovery of the American land in 1492 was a huge point in the world's history. America is nowadays the most influential, powerful, and secure country in the entire world, and since 1492, the American land has had a massive impact on the globe. At this point, so many major events have happened in human history. I physically cannot talk about all of them or I'd be talking for days. To summarize everything so far, history started being recorded between five to 6,000 years ago. Documents such as the Bible started being written during this time. The cuneiform and hieroglyphic writing systems became popular during this time as well. Over the next 2,000 years, ink, scrolls, and paper started to become popular, and humans went from writing in pictures to writing in words. Then, in the last 2,000 years, humans have continued to record history via pen and paper and in books and documents of all different kinds. And of course, the day and age we live in now is the digital age. Really, in the last 50 years, this form of history recollection has been the way to go. You can just look up anything about any time in history on the internet now, and this is by far humans' most amazing invention allowing any information that you want to know being available right at your fingertips. This is something that I guarantee you the scholars of old would have given anything to be able to do. And that, my friends, is the history of history.
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing. This video did take a lot of work, and I would really appreciate the support. I keep saying this, but we are absolutely getting somewhere, and I need your help to keep on growing. Again, thank you guys so much, and have a great day.